Hey everyone, welcome back to Gundam Build Guide. I am Yoon Buster Green and we have another crazy week in the game. So it's the first week past the 2.4 update and there's been some major heavy developments now that we've had a week to digest and see how this update actually works and what the impact of it is. I'll come back to that later though because that's not the biggest news this week. The big news this week, which a lot of people really want me to cover, is that this week the St. Andrew Stein came out. And after a very long series of lackluster weekly suits, the St. Andrew Stein is probably one of the strongest in-game suits we've seen since the Crystal Unicorn a few weeks back. It is literally overpowered as hell. And I don't think there's ever been a unit more focused on being a very strong physical shooter. Also, in a shocking twist, I only did a few pulls on it, but I literally got the absolute best parts for it in those few pulls I did. So, in my pulls, first off, I got the bazooka. Now, the bazooka is just another standard bazooka. Nothing to write home about it other than it's extra large and it looks very cool. Next up is the shield. Now, the shield is another physical rapid shooter shield. It's a very good shield. It's actually one of the best shields in the game. Now, if you've previously pulled the Altered Sazabi or Nightingale shield, it's pretty much the same shield. So it's not actually anything new, but nonetheless, combined with the rest of those, it's one of the top three offensive shields in the game. But then we take a turn for the serious. So the head on the St. Andrew Stein, which you know usually determines the shooting stat, has a very god tier OP skill, which gets even crazier when you alter it. So it gets a 17% EX skill boost to start with, but if you alter it, it goes up to a 37% EX skill boost. And then finally, the absolute most interesting thing about the St. Andrew Stein, which I managed to pull, is it has a freaking grenade gun. So as I've noticed in the past couple weeks, grenades are pretty much the best weapon in this game, but there has never been a straight up grenade gun in this game until now. So my personal best pick for best part slash weapon on the St. Andrew Stein is this very, very unique, completely useful, completely devastating grenade gun. Also for the record, the legs are a complete copy of the St. Andrew's legs, which are good for a physical build. And the torso, the arms, and the backpack seem to not be anything special. But they still at least look cool because the St. Andrew Stein is just a cool design. Oh, and also this week, there's the Build Strike Gundam Galaxy Cosmos, and no one gives a food. Anyway, so, by the way, if you also want to go full whale this week, there's a super strong version of Char in his CCA head honcho outfit. I would only recommend you go after this if you're trying to complete the St. Andrew Stein, or otherwise you are working a job and you plan on spending a lot of fucking money on this game. Okay, so let's see what else we have this week. So the charity suit this week is from Double Zeta again because they've been holding back all those good Double Zeta units. And it's the Gay Monk, which is a very weird name for me to say because it's very gay and it's also very Monk. Now it comes with the 1980s sex rock star Shara Soon, a fan favorite character because she has ugly 1980s hair and because she showed her tits a lot. It's also a remarkably strong charity unit which comes with some really good EX skills and it's also very, very large, which just gives it a coolness factor. So topping off all this, there is a rerun of the Rosen Zulu and the Goo Custom and the Nodley Gundam if you are playing the weekly missions. And even if you're not, those are all up for alteration, which makes it worth it if you have them already. So I've been wisely saving my blue alteration parts for an event like this. And since these are some of my favorite units in the game, I dropped a few of those blue alteration parts on a few of these parts because I've been using these parts pretty frequently in the battle circuit and I knew them to be good enough as it is already and if they can be better then I'm all for it. So in terms of priority, you should definitely upgrade the Psycho Jammers on the Rhodes and Zulu first, followed by the Trial System which is the Torso on the Natalie. And that's really it for the Natalie. The Natalie is literally the weakest of these three suits. So after that, I went with the head and the arms on the goof because I've used them in the battle circuit a few times. The goof head has a very high melee stat. And from there on out, if you have any remaining blue alteration parts, just follow your heart. Like all these suits are pretty decent. 
That being said, the second half of the EX skill battle circuit came out, and while it was very, very easy, there were a few tricky rounds and I used some pretty balanced builds, so I was playing this one really sloppy because it was so easy and you still just have to fight SD Gundams. I guess I'll have my deep dive video out soon, but I'm also a little busy this week, so we'll have to see what happened. Oh, and further on, Chapter 15 of the story missions are out. Now, Chapter 15 is, in my opinion, one of the weaker story chapters that have come out recently. It just reminds you that all the main characters are still in high school, except for Rindo, who graduated. It introduces a brand new girl who is a shy girl. Those are always fun. And it also introduces a new boy character who is unapologetically a Yakuza, or a teenager who really, really wants to be a Yakuza. He's even wearing a weird shirt that looks like a Yakuza tattoo. So the reward for finishing Chapter 15 in the game is a very weird horror plot from Build Divers. I completely forgot this thing even existed, but now that it's in the game, it does lead to some weird new build possibilities. Uh, so the arena has updated, and now the new arena reward is the extremely valuable Gundam G4 from the PS2 game Gundam Encounters in Space. This is probably one of the best arena awards we've seen in months, and this is just such a cool unit to have in your collection. So definitely remember to redeem it if you've got arena points saved up. And some other minor develops in the clan area. So my clan is awesome. I love you guys. Dylan has been carrying the entire clan. They have been managing to finish the clan mission every day. I've managed to finish like three clan missions without using any buffs and a few where I did have to use the buffs, but I don't want to spend my in-game cash on buffs. So anyway, <sighs> my clan has been working their asses off beating these super hard clan missions so that we could upgrade the clan store. And by the way, another thing I've noticed is if you buy the buff items, you can save those items I'm not sure if you can die and save them, but if you quit the mission when it looks like you're going to die, then they will save the item for you, and you can retry the mission without using it. But anyway, so my clan worked their asses off, and they actually managed to level up the shop to level D. Right before the week ended, but then, four hours later, the week ended and the shop level completely reset. So, I guess our takeaway is the fucking shop level resets every week. So, the shop level got shipped back down to level E, but on the flip side, since it reset, you could buy more stuff in it, which, okay, cool. But it kind of makes upgrading the shop level not really that important either, because if you upgrade it, the stuff in the shop is still expensive and the upgrades reset every week. So that's a very crazy contradiction in my honest opinion. Now I've talked to some people in my crew and they said that based on it doing this, they think that maybe they'll hold on to their upgrade items and just strategically use them all on the same day, which does sound like a decent plan. Either way, I'm currently too busy wasting my in-game money on trying to do upgrades for the leg gears. So I actually don't actually want to buy a ton of crew shop items just to make the crew shop missions easier because every once in a while my crew is strong enough that I can beat them without any items. Anyway, so that's Build Guide for the week, you guys. If you guys have the money, definitely invest in the St. Andrew Stein. If you don't, the battle circuit is just very easy and a good one to play. And yeah, so that's the 2.4 update. They dropped a lot of weird shit, but they dropped so many things to do that it is a good time to play the game right now and just see what you can finish. I'm you, Buster Green. Thanks for coming by. Please subscribe to my channel because I still need 400 subscribers to get monetized. All right, thank you guys. Good night. Later.